In this video, we are going to discuss about the anatomy of rectum and anal canal. Rectum commences at the level of third piece of sacrum. It is a continuation of the pelvic canal, which is ending in the anal canal. So guys, you can see the third piece of the sacral vertebrae on at the level of which the rectum is commencing. And it is a continuation of the pelvic colon and it is ending in the anal canal. The rectum measuring about 12 to 15 cm. You can appreciate well here the pelvic colon continuation of which is the rectum ending in the anal canal. The rectum will follow the curves of the sacrum. You can see the curve of the sacrum here and the rectum will also follow the curves of the sacrum. So towards the left side there are two curves the right upper curve and the right lower curve. And towards the right side, we have one curve that is the middle left curve. So you can see here rectum following the curves of the sacrum. It is curving twice to the left and once to the right side before it is passing down to continue as the anal canal. Moving to the relations of the rectum, anteriorly to the rectum, it is covered by the peritoneum which is related to the posterior wall of pouch of Douglas. So guys you can see they are talking this is the rectum the anal canal they are talking about the anterior relations anterior to the rectum we have the pouch of Douglas posterior wall. So this is the pouch of Douglas the posterior wall of the pouch of Douglas is related to the anterior part of the rectum. So let us see in the picture for a better understanding. This is the rectum and we have the pouch of Douglas. And then the ampulla is related to the posterior vaginal wall which is separated by the rectovaginal septum. So you can see the rectovaginal fascia here. So guys, so this is the uterus, the cervix and the vagina. This is the septum. So this ampulla of the rectum is separated. It is related anteriorly to the posterior wall of the vagina which is separated by the rectovaginal fascia. Hope it's clear. See guys this is the ampulla of the rectum and this is the this is the anterior wall of the vagina and this is the posterior wall of the vagina. This posterior wall is related to the ampulla of the rectum by the help of the rectovaginal fascia. The lower part of the rectum is related to the perineal body. This is the, the one which is given in the green color is the perineal body. So this lower part is of the rectum will be this is the anal canal so the a little upper to it this is the lower part of the rectum which is related to this perineal body hope it is clear the anterior relations the posterior wall of pouch of douglas the posterior vaginal wall and also the perineal body so you can differentiate the perineal body here this perineal body which is related to the lower part of rectum and the pouch of Douglas posterior part and also the vagina. The, the vagina also the posterior wall which is separated by the rectovaginal fascia. Then we have the relations, the posterior relations of rectum. Posteriorly, the rectum will be obviously related to the sacrum and coccyx. So from the first picture, you can differentiate well the rectum posteriorly to the sacrum and then continuing in the coccyx. Even in this picture, you can see the uh, sacrum and the coccyx. The rectum is related posteriorly to the sacrum and the coccyx from which the intervene from which it is intervened by the loose areolar tissue we also can see the sacral nerves and the middle sacral vessels vessels are the arteries and the veins so we have the pamp, uh, 
piriformis lateral sacral artery median sacral artery then these arteries the vessels the nerves and also the areolar tissue these parts will be intervened posterior to the rectum in the sacrum and then we have the lateral relations of sacrum it is related to the uterosacral ligament and then the pelvic plexus of the nerves and the ureter so laterally there will be ureters present the pelvic plexus of the nerves and also the uterosacral ligament near the ano rectal junction it will be related to the levator ani muscle so guys you can see the levator ani which is continuing and near the ano rectal junction we have the levator ani both laterally and then below the levator ani muscle it is related to the ischiorectal fossa so this fossa is also going to be present here so these uh, lateral both muscles levator ani and the, uh, we also have the this yellow color okay this is the ischiorectal fossa laterally both laterally we have that the rectum is surrounded by the rectal fascia so this uh, rectum will be surrounded by the rectal fascia like we saw in the previous picture muscle coat will contain the outer longitudinal and the inner circular fibers so you can see in the picture here the outer longitudinal and the these are the outer longitudinal and the inner circular muscles which are present in the rectum the muscular coat then moving on to the submucous layer it is containing the venous plexus then we have the mucous membrane which is lined by the columnar epithelium you can see the columnar epithelium the outer longitudinal muscles inner circular muscles and then we have the submucous coat and the mucosa which is containing the columnar epithelium then the nerve plexus and the venous plexus will be present in the submucous layer then we are done with the rectum we are moving on to the anal canal so there is some error oh guys give me a minute we need to make this correction yeah oh okay so the anal canal this has to be deleted yeah done so the anal canal will measure about 2.5 cm this anal canal is measuring 2.5 cm in length 2.5 and then we have the direction of the anal canal it is directed backward almostly at right angles to the ampulla and at the site of insertion of the puborectalis part of the levator ani muscle so you can see the levator ani muscle and we have the hilton slide this is what they are saying uh, here this is the ampulla of the rectum and this anal canal will be at the right angles to the ampulla we have the ampulla and the anal canal it is found at the right angles and then at the site of insertion we have the levator ani muscle it uh, this anal canal will end in the form of anal orifice and then the junction of the upper two third so when you divide this 2.5 cm anal canal into three parts then the upper two third and the lower one third we have a white line which is known as hilton's line which you can differentiate in this picture this hilton's line being present in the upper two third and the lower one third of the anal canal then you can see the puborectalis muscle so they are situated uh, at the junction then the relations anteriorly the anal canal is related to the perineal body like we saw in the previous picture then the posteriorly we have the ano coccygeal body so guys you can see the anal canal being related to the ano coccygeal body then we have the two sphincters in the anus 
that is the internal anal sphincter and the external anal sphincter. Internal anal sphincter is an involuntary sphincter. It is formed by the thickening of the circular layer of the upper two third of anal canal. You can see we saw the circular muscle fibers and these layers will form the sphincter that is involuntary internal sphincter. Then we have the external sphincter which is voluntary. voluntary. Obviously the external will be voluntary. It is under our control, the person's control. Okay. And uh, it is surrounding the entire length of the canal. The external anal sphincter will consist of three parts. The subcutaneous part which will be attached to the skin. Then we have a superficial part which is starting from the perineal body and it is inserted posteriorly to the tip of the coccyx. Then we have the deep part of the sphincter which is separating from the sphincter ani internus which is separating from the internal sphincter. This external sphincter the deepest part will be separating from the internal sphincter by the levator ani muscle. So you can differentiate it with the picture. So the sprinter here, the external sprinter, and then we have the internal sprinter. This internal sprinter by the muscular fibers, whereas the external sprinter we have three parts: deep, superficial, and subcutaneous. So you can differentiate here the subcutaneous part, which is attached to the skin. You can see. And then we have the superficial part. So this is the superficial part and the deep part. Hope it's clear. And then the blood supply of the rectum and anal canal. The arterial supply we have from the superficial rectal branch of the mesenteric artery. The inferior mesenteric artery will be supplying the so, uh, so the inferior mesenteric artery, then the branch of the inferior mesenteric artery, we have the superior rectal artery. Then we have the middle rectal artery, which is a branch of internal iliac artery. Then we have the inferior rectal artery, which is a branch of internal, again the internal iliac artery. So guys, superior rectal, middle rectal, inferior rectal. Only the superior is a branch of mesenteric artery. Whereas the middle and the inferior are the branches of iliac, internal iliac arteries. So even if you don't remember the branches, you have to remember that the rectum and anal canal is by the superior, middle and inferior rectal arteries. Then we have the venous drainage of the rectum and anal canal, the rectum and the upper third. So we have the anal canal being divided into three parts so this upper third and the rectum will be supply will be drained by the superior rectal veins and from the superior rectal veins they move into the portal circulation the lower third of the anal canal will uh, on both the sides will drain into the inferior rectal artery okay The venous drainage, you can see the inferior rectal veins, these veins, the middle rectal vein and then the superior rectal vein, all the veins are draining into the portal circulation, portal caval anastomosis. Okay. The lymphatic drainage of rectum and anal canal. The lymphatics from the rectum and the upper third of the anal canal will be drained into the internal iliac and the pre-aortic nodes. So guys, again from the rectum and upper third is into the iliac and pre-aortic nodes. Whereas the lower third will be drained into the inguinal nodes. So it is into the inguinal and here it is into the iliac and pre-aortic bodies. The lymphatic drainage into the, this is the superficial inguinal lymph nodes, the lower part. Whereas the upper third and the rectum is into the 
internal iliac lymph nodes and also the pre para rectal or para aortic nodes moving on to the nerve supply the rectum and the upper two thirds of the anal canal are supplied by the autonomic nerves through the pelvic plexus the lower third of anal canal will be supplied by the inferior hemorrhoidal nerve so you can see the lower third being supplied by the inferior hemorrhoidal nerve which is pain sensitive zone and the upper is by the autonomic nerves from the rectal plex plexus in the nerve uh, nerve plexus in rectal mucosa so the nerve plexus which are supplying the rectal mucosa of the upper two third it is a pain insensitive zone then we have the pectineal white line hilton's line so i hope uh, everything is clear if you have any doubts please put it in the comment section and if you like my video hit the like button and subscribe